Hello and welcome to yet another episode of we have a new elementary OS release which is actually super exciting because differently from KDE and GNOME projects, elementary only releases stuff when they feel like it's ready and it could take years. As an example, since the last release, it has been a year. So what's up? What's, what has the elementary team done in the last year? I'm so excited. So. Firstly, they are putting a lot of focus on the App Center, which makes sense. Your operating system is supposed to let you use your applications and a core experience is to actually be able to get those applications. So a lot of changes are about the App Center. Let's talk about that. Firstly, they redesigned how the interface looks when you're seeing an application for the first time on the store. And that is by using a lot more screenshots that actually fill the width of the whole page about the application, which is pretty nice. The developer is also able to choose an accent color that will be in the header of the application. And if I understood this correctly, this also applies to Flatpak applications, which is also pretty cool. And they are making it easier to see whether this application is currently actively developed and everything. As an example, you will have an icon that shows you whether the application supports the latest elementary OS platform, or rather you get one if you don't. And instead of showing just the latest release notes, the page will show you the last five releases so that you're able to see how fast does the application actually do new stuff. Also, it will show a link to resolved tickets on the application issue tracker to show to you that application is actually active and that the developer will take your feedback into consideration if needed, which is also a super cool idea that I think only elementary OS is currently doing. Secondly, updates. So Flatpak makes it easier for developers to publish update quickly. And now the App Store will actually automatically update the Flatpaks as new versions arrive. But there is still an option in the menu to disable that or update whenever you want. But what if the application that you're looking for isn't on the official elementary store? Well, as they say, site loading applications and alternative stores are a major feature of elementary OS, which puts it apart to other operating systems, hopefully not Linux, that don't allow you to do that or close you to or locks you to a closed system like, I don't know, iOS. So previously, if you tried to install an application that was from an alternative store and that wasn't reviewed by elementaries, a warning would pop up, but that was deemed unnecessary. And now you will only see an icon next to the other application warnings that tells you that this application hasn't been reviewed by elementaries, which is true and makes sense. And as I said before, side-loaded side applications from alternative stores should show the brand colors on the application info page at the top. Then we have web applications. If you're into that, elementary ships with GNOME Web 43, which added, if you recall about that, I did a video, the support for web applications. Web apps show up in the application menu with their own icon to see privacy settings and can run in the background. If you've installed a web application, you can also manage it still within the GNOME web application, just the same as what happens currently in GNOME. If I understood this correctly, Elementary OS has taken the solution from GNOME and made sure that it still works nicely. And that was everything about application store. That was a lot. Let's actually start talking about the applications and new settings. So first of all, Elementary OS has, has a feedback application, which is super interesting. By the way, Kitty, GNOME, I think they don't have that. And it would be something interesting. Maybe instead of relying on an external bug tracker or such, you could actually have an integrated feedback application to manage those things. It's something that I think could be investigated for us as well, I mean. Meanwhile, Elementary feedback application is just miles ahead with instantaneous opening times and a better coverage of application settings and desktop components. It's been improved throughout. You can find it in the application menu. It opens up faster. You can navigate into it using keyboard shortcuts and keyboard in general, and it's more responsive for small displays. 
Then we have actually first time usage, like when you actually install Elementary OS and you try it for the first time. In just a couple of weeks, we will have KDE Plasma 5.27, which release for the first time with a welcome application. And yet again, Elementary OS is just miles ahead with an application already improving theirs. So first of all, in the installer, they try to reduce the number of, of screens whilst providing actually more information. The page that appears before you install Elementary OS shows warnings regarding virtual machines, developer builds, and system requirements. It automatically detects whether you're using the left or right buttons in the installer, and if you're using the right one, it offers you to switch to a left-handed mouse button system, which is, okay, pretty cool. <laughs> Throughout the video, I just pick the things that sounds cooler to me and I just add which is particularly cool to them just so you know I love them a bit more than the others. There's also a view to configure automatic updates, but again, if you don't want them, you can also configure that in the app center itself. We've gone through it. And if you like automatic switching between the light and the dark theme, now in the installer itself, you get the option to pick sunset to sunrise for the dark theme, which Kitty doesn't have, Kitty developers. <laughs> Let's talk about office productivity. There is a new design for the mail application and now it supports Microsoft 365 accounts. The tasks application now has offline support, synchronizes remote list when, ne when network is available and sends notification when a task is due. Yes, I had to read and this is particularly important. There is now the option to remove the default single click opens an application, which is the default in KDE, is the default elementary US, but KDE might switch eventually to a double click to open system and elementary US is adding support for double click to open and single click to select like in Windows, which makes me unhappy because I think that single click to open is just better. You, you have to get used to it, but it's better anyway. Again, for all applications in Elementary OS that are taken from GNOME, they are updated to the version from GNOME 43. As an example, you have the document viewer and also the archive manager. So all the new features that you will see in GNOME 43 also apply to Elementary 7 as well. Next up, I've talked about how nice it is for elementaries to have a feedback application and apparently they take pride in following user feedback because they say that the feedback regarding the music application wasn't that good and thus they have decided to rewrite it from scratch, which... <laughs> which is just amazing, like, oh, you don't like it? Yeah, let's do it again. The entire thing, sure, sure. W wow, kudos. So yeah, the design is now much better. It follows what the user feedback said. And of course, they are still open to feedback. So if you want to tune in and say, no, look, do it again, again, please, you can do that. They will be happy to start the whole thing over, I'm sure. Jokes aside, there is improved support for reading metadata of the music files, such as track number and album art. It now works with system-wide controls and it adapts nicely to small and big screens. So it's convergent, that's the word, convergent. Also, if you're watching a video, that one should also appear in the sound indi indicator alongside the music that you're currently listening to or in general, other, other media players. System settings. We now have support for offline firmware updates, which is pretty cool. I think this has existed for like the KDE world at least, maybe the GNOME world, but I'm not sure. You do have the power profile management in system settings. It was introduced in the GNOME and KDE recently, like some a couple of versions ago. Now it's also in elementary S and it allows you to choose between performance mode and energy saving mode, these kind of things. The multitask settings have been redesigned and also now if you move the mouse to one of the corners, not only you can trigger an action, but you, you can actually select a terminal command to be executed when the mouse is put into that corner. Redesign printer settings with 
clear ink levels view and ability to clear print queue. You, you, cool, cool stuff, cool stuff. You also get, very similarly to GNOME, an option to set the meta key to open and close the multitasking view. This is what GNOME currently does and it is something that you now kind of can customize KDE to do as well. It is an interesting approach to multitasking. I'm not sure if the, I'm the kind of person to do that. Are you? Then we also have updates to the design guidelines and the developer platform in general. And a couple of things on this one, because firstly, it's pretty cool. I think that Elementary S waits to do an update and then releases all the stuff together. So the new desktop, yes, but also new application, new system settings, and also new design guidelines and developer platform. I think that's really cool. KDE, again, to make an example, because I'm from KDE, doesn't do that. They release the desktop and then in a separate way, applications, but not all of them. Some applications have their own publishing schedule and then frameworks, again, in a different time schedule. It's not something I'm a fan of. From a promotional point of view, even, it's much nicer, in my opinion, when everything is released on the same point. And also, I'm very much a big fan of how Elementary S manages this developer platform, where Elementary S is actually an entire platform in itself, and they tried their best to be consistent in their design and to make sure to review applications so that they follow also the design that is super cool and something to actually learn from, big fan. So firstly, from icons, we have new icons you can use from, and you know, it's the boring stuff. Like you have a computer fail icon, a preference, desktop theme, applications, that, you know, new icons, yay. Old icons are removed. And this is more important. There is a new application, which is called the icon browser, which allows you to browse between all the icons provided by elementary. We have that actually in KDE, it's called Cuttlefish, I think. And for developers, this is extremely useful. If you want to add an icon to your application very quickly, maybe you're changing just a metadata file and you need a name of an icon to put there, you just open Cuttlefish and in Elementary S now the icon browser and you just search for what you're searching for and then just copy paste the name. This is super useful. Now Elementary S has its own um, app framework called Granite, Gra Granite. Granite, in Italian, granite is the ice creams that you take, which are liquid, okay. <laughs> to, be, to be fully honest, I don't know anything of this, of this app framework, but now it has been ported to support JTK4, which is cool. And the widgets now take the paddings and margins from the, from the JTK.CSS theme for scaling purposes and um, responsiveness. Now, there is much more stuff in my notes that I was supposed to talk about, but it's incredibly boring. If you're a developer, go check out the app framework, updated one. You can find it like the full API reference on valadoc.org. That's where you should be looking at. There is also improvements in general to more the tools for developers to actually work on new applications. But again, this is more niche, so let's skip that. And if you're a developer, I just refer you to the official announcement that you can find in the video description, unless I forgot, because I always do. And that was everything, actually. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And by the way, yes, a lot have, a lot has changed in my channel in the past few videos, and this one is particularly different. It's very hard to stay in focus, actually. If you have any comments regarding the quality of the video, things that I could improve, the audio, any of that, I'm working on that a lot, so it's the best time. And also today is the last day of January, and that matters because each month I try before the end of the month to reach 700 euros in donations because everything that I do, this channel, the new stuff that I buy to improve the quality of my channel and my KD development, all of that is only I'm only able to do that because of the donations. So this month I'm this close at reaching my goal, but I'm not there. So if you can tune in, please, something that would be awesome. I've got everything, LibraPay, PayPal, Patreon, Ko-Fi, anything literally. So if you want to chip in something, 
I would be super happy and that would be awesome. So thanks everybody for following along. I hope that you, you like you like what I'm doing. So see ya.